to replace a sky with a fantasy sky or any other kind of sky, you first need some elements. We're gonna go ahead and import these elements by navigating here to my sky replacement folder under free. I've got some stuff that we're gonna be able to play with here. And the first thing we need is a video of you and a background with a bright sky, something like this right here. You want it to be very contrasty and preferably with a relatively even background. It's gonna make it much easier for you. So we're just gonna add this clip to the timeline. And I've given you this clip of me walking right here and these other elements, and they are linked in the description below. So why don't you go ahead and grab those right now. I'm gonna hit Shift Z, so this fills up the timeline. And the first thing I wanna do is make this even more contrasty. To do that, I'm gonna jump over here to Adjustment, and we can just, you know, change the contrast and make it a little more contrasty just to start with that. The highlights, we want to be brighter, all the whites and the grays. So I'm gonna drag the highlights up a bit, and that's getting brighter there. The shadows we want darker. We want more distinction between the background and me for this to work really well. And the whites we want brighter. This is actually getting pretty, pretty darn good here. Now that's probably good enough, but we're gonna mess with it a little bit more. I'm gonna drag the blacks down a little bit more. And you can see the clouds a little bit right here, which is probably okay, but I'm gonna jump over here to curves. And I know these are kind of obvious and easy, but you wanna get used to some of the other features that CapCut has, such as the curves. Now this is what's called a luma curve. Here on the left is the darks, the blacks. If I drag it up, the blacks get bright. And over here on the right are the whites. If I drag it down, the whites get darker. So we wanna get this kind of gray area. So that grayish area might be not totally white, but maybe right around here. If we drag it up, it's gonna get a little bit whiter. And hey, and it goes away. And now we have a pretty contrasty image that's gonna work really well for what we're trying to do here. Now I've got a couple of backgrounds. I really like this one. I think it's pretty neat. I'm gonna drag it down here. It has some music attached, which we do not want. Now you can use my backgrounds. You can get your own backgrounds on something like VectEasy.com. I want this moon to be up here instead of down here on the bottom. So to do that, I'm just going to click on this and jump under video basic and just rotate it 180 degrees. So under rotate, I'm just going to type 180, bam. And now the uh, the moon thing is up here in the top right, which is where I like it. Now you, you can't see me at all yet, but it's actually <laughs> easier than you think. I'm just going to click on the sky right here, make sure it's highlighted and jump over to blend and select multiply. And that will combine these two layers. Now if we play it, you notice that we can see kind of the sky down here, which isn't great. So to fix that, we are going to jump over here under mask, select the first one horizontal, and we're gonna rotate the mask around by clicking this rotate button and dragging it around like that. Ding, 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 ding. And now you can see why having a fairly even background is gonna work best for us. I'm gonna drag it down here just below the lowest rock right about there, and we're gonna feather it. Now, I'm just gonna show you here what feathering does. Feathering just makes it like, oh, blend in really nicely like that. So I'm gonna drag it back down here and we're gonna feather it right like this. And it's gonna make it look really natural, like like it's really there. And, and to not see the line, we just need to click over back over here on basic and to not see this line, we just click anywhere in the timeline. And now, you know, we're pretty close. That could be it, but we're gonna make it better still. Next, what we wanna do is make this background match this a little bit better. This is a pro feature, but it's a pretty, pretty cool one. So to do that, we're going to click on this clip of me and jump over here to adjustment and click on basic. And we're gonna select color match, which is a pro feature. And I'm gonna drag my playhead over here to the right. And I want to match this to this. Now you notice that I let this continue over here and the reason I let this continue didn't didn't trim it is because I want to use this as a reference point. So what CapCut is going to do, it's going to look at these colors and try to match these colors to this video of me below. I'm going to click OK because that's what my playhead is parked on. It's going to use these. Click OK and bam, it did it. It's pretty, uh, pretty extreme. We don't want it that extreme probably. So luckily we can adjust the intensity and take it down. Now there's no rules. You can do whatever you want. Here's with nothing. I just want to bring it up right here just so it's a little bluer like that. And now we're getting, we're getting darn good. And notice how good this is because I have this background so bright, you know, without, without this layer, type the letter V and it goes away a second. Um, it's just, it's just white back here so you can see even through my glasses. So CapCut does a really good job blending these layers together. Now I'm pretty dark. The sky's pretty dark. I want to make the sky a little bit brighter, maybe just so I stand out more. So to do that, it's going to make sure the sky is selected and already have adjustment selected. So I'm gonna just scroll down here and I'm gonna just drag the highlights up a little bit. And remember the curve thing I showed you? Start using it, get comfortable with it. I want 
all of this to get a little bit brighter. So clicking in the middle will just get the average brightness brighter. So I'm just gonna drag this and it'll brighten that whole image. And that's more what I like because I can see me better. By the way, if you wanna grow a YouTube channel, if you're serious about this whole YouTube scene, you need to know how to edit really well. And I teach you to master CapCut in like a day. If you're hardcore and you just go through all the modules and you practice, you could, you could have this program down and you know save yourself like a year of learning. Plus I teach you everything you need to know to get more views and more subscribers with every single video. Like I promise if you just do what I tell you in the course, you will get more views and more subs than every video. So click the link below or go to mastercapcut.com and, and get your YouTube game on. And we're gonna do a couple more things to make this even more fun. I created this image right here using CapCut's new text to image generator and I have a video about that linked right uh, right there. And in that video, I'll show you how to create images like this. And I specifically said, put it on a green screen. And the reason is so I could easily cut it out. Now, because this is exactly in the center, we have other options, but let me just show you a couple ways to do this. I'm gonna drop this into the timeline and obviously it doesn't remotely match anything yet and it doesn't feel like it's there. But all I'm gonna do is go to video, Remove background. Here's another pro feature, auto removal. Remember auto removal used to only remove human figures. Well, now it can do this kind of stuff too. And with that bright green background, it made it really easy. So that's what I would do considering I have pro or if you have pro because you tried it for a week, that's, that's the best way to do it. But if you don't have pro, here's another way. I made it green so that we can use a chroma key. A chroma key chooses a color to key out. Chroma means color. And the easiest color to key out in digital video is green, a bright green like that. So if I select chroma key and I have this color picker, I can choose the green and it's a really solid, even green. When you're doing green screen, make the green solid, makes it way easier. I click on that and bam, we're almost there, except for uh, we got that Dramina thing. And the easiest way to get rid of that is to click on mask, click on the circle and just drag it out till Dramina has gone. And this might also help you to realize that there was something else we could have done. We could have just used this circle mask because it's dead center, it's really easy. And we just, we would drag it down to all the green went away. So that's another way we could have gotten rid of the green. There are many ways to do things in editing programs like CapCuts, but you wanna kinda of learn all of them because some ways work better than other ways, depending on the situation. For example, if this didn't have an even green background, this would have been the best way to do it using the mask tool. You may notice that this doesn't remotely blend with anything here. So we could do that color match thing here, but let's just, let's try something else. We want it to be a little bluer and not so vibrant. So it kind of blends with things better. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on adjustment and go back to basic. So first I'm gonna adjust the color temperature. If I drag this slider to the right, it makes it more red, more orange, and to the left, it makes it more blue. So there's a start. It's too saturated, too bright. So I'm gonna drag the saturation down a little bit. And I'm gonna drag the highlights down a little bit so it's not as bright, and the shadows. And again, there's no rules. Just do what you think looks kind of cool. And I'll drag the blacks down a little bit and the whites just so it's not quite so vibrant in this image. And the next thing I'm gonna do is jump over to these color wheels. These look fancy, it's not too scary. Whatever direction you drag this thing is the color this thing starts to turn. So we're gonna do it with all of these. I'm gonna drag them all closer to the blue. So like, boom, these shadows get bluer. The middle grays get bluer. The tint overall gets bluer. And, and even this offset will make it even more blue. And that's kind of, it's almost gray. So you can play with this and, and do what you like. This is what kind of works for me. And the next thing we want to do is have it move with the rest of the background. The background's kind of all moving. I want this thing to be a little more obnoxious and kind of get big. So what we're going to do is start it over here in this corner. So it'll start on screen and we have all this light coming below. So we want to make sure that this is towards the bottom. We are going to rotate it a little bit. So it kind of starts here and then maybe rotates a little more. Let's position the playhead at the beginning of the timeline. We can drag the playhead or we can hit the up arrow and it'll go to the previous edit, which is the very beginning of this whole thing. And then we're gonna jump over to video basic and we're gonna modify three properties, scale, position, and rotate. And to do that, we use something called keyframes. A keyframe marks the beginning or the end of a change in a property. I'm gonna change all of these. I can do them one at a time, or I could just click this button and I'll set a keyframe for all of them. And I'm gonna to jump to the end of our sequence. I could drag my playhead there or hit the down arrow. And I wanna get rid of this guy. What is the keystroke? To 
add and edit and delete that. Do you remember? It is W. Bam, that's gone. And now I want to make sure that I'm on this. If I zoom in, you'll see that I am really past it. I want to be on everything. So I'm going to go back one frame with the left arrow. Now I'm on all of this. I'm going to modify the properties for this little fake moon thing. So I'm going to make sure this is highlighted. I'm on the very last frame for this. And from the beginning to here, I want it to come in closer to me. I want it to get bigger. I want it to rotate a little bit. So let's do all of those things. First, we'll rotate it a little bit so it doesn't look too obnoxious. It's over 10 seconds, so we can rotate it kind of quite a bit. We want to scale it quite a bit. So oh, the planet's coming at me and we want to change the position so it's actually, you know, it's, 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 it's coming for me. And we can see if we like it by dragging this and yeah, that's going to look, I think that's going to look kind of cool. And one more thing, we could leave it like that, but here's a little tip to make it kind of blend with it. And it's a fantasy surreal thing. So I'm just going to highlight it and I'm going to jump over here to the blend modes and I'm going to mess with these and choose one I like. Let's see, darken. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. I think darken looks kind of cool. And maybe we'll just lower the opacity a little bit. So some of those stars look like they're maybe in front of it and just kind of find what you like. And then... Wow, that's that's looking pretty good. And now to plus it up a little bit, you, you gotta have a little bit of music. So I'm just gonna jump over here to audio and under music, I'm gonna type, I don't know, what about Space Mystery? And see if we like any of these tracks or songs. Outer Space Floating. Eh. I kinda like that one. So let's drag this guy down here. What's this mystery space, uh, space sound? Let's try that too. Yeah, there's some, so I like that too. So we're gonna drag these guys down here and clean them up a little bit. The sound didn't start so right about there. So I'm gonna drag this guy over here. I'm gonna hit shift Z so I can see my whole timeline and see that I wasn't even close. So I'm gonna drag this guy all the way to here, this guy all the way to here. And I'm gonna type, actually I'm gonna type the letter W, hit shift Z so I can see the whole thing. And I see there's a little bit of a space at the beginning here. To zoom in, I'm gonna position my playhead over here. I'm gonna hold down the command key on my Mac, the control key on my PC and hit my scroll wheel, or, or scroll my scroll wheel. And I'm gonna zoom in here so I can see what's going on. I can see, oh, it's got a little bit of a space. I wanna get rid of that one space. So this thing starts like right when the music starts. So I'm gonna drag that guy over, hit shift Z, trim these guys up at the end by hitting what? W, they're highlighted. I type letter W, adds an edit, they go away. And then we're just gonna test the audio and see if we like it. It's a little loud, so I'm gonna select both of them and lower the volume for both of them. When you have them both highlighted, look at this. The volume for both of them goes down. So we're just gonna drag them both down a few. Let's see how this came out, starting right now. To see how to use CapCut's insane new text image stuff, you wanna click on that link in the bottom left of your screen.